the ball came shooting out of the pocket so fast, like the cameras were having a hard time keeping up with it. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your hosts, Andrew Chang and Justin Goddard. Hello and welcome to the Wandering Buffalo podcast, a show on the built-in Buffalo network. My name is Andrew Chang and alongside me is my co-host Justin Goddard. And tonight, tonight, Justin, we are going to talk about the big, big, big win that the Buffalo Bills had over an Arrowhead Stadium over the Kansas City Chiefs. 38-20, to 20, what a pounding, and it, I'm just so excited and just infatuated that this game ended the way that it did, all the build-up to it, and... It, it it was just awesome, just to put it out there plainly. We're going to talk about all the highlights and lowlights from, you know, all the position groups, as we always do. Um, but overall, this is going to be a more, uh, more or less less structured episode. And the reason why we do that is because we have a special guest joining us on this show. Uh, who I'll get to, uh, who I'll get to in a little bit, and she'll join us in just a moment as well. But as always, you can find us on most social media and podcasting platforms by searching up The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. And if you don't like our show, hey, there's other amazing content that you can find on the Built in Buffalo Network. So go go ahead and check them out, such as Buffalo on the Brain with Vince Taylor. Great guy there. And I know my guy Justin does some work with him uh, every Monday that episode comes out. So check that out. Uh, before we get into anything, Justin, how does it feel to be wrong dude i love being wrong right now just kind of echo what you just said just all the emotions that go into this win i mean it it's hands down the most satisfying win that you know other than maybe eking into the playoffs and that was just kind of the emotions of having been out of it for so long but just Mm -hmm. this early in the season to kind of feel like we got that that hurdle overcome and it's not this daunting unmovable force in the Kansas City Chiefs anymore and you know if we play them again in the playoffs let's do it again you know it's not staring at me anymore so I'm feeling Mm -hmm. really high this week I'm I'm trying to find another team in the league that I feel any sort of threat from and I'm trying not to get too high but it's it's not working right right and like I said normally it's just Justin and I on this show, but we have a very special guest joining today's episode, and she'll be here shortly, but it, her name is Angelina White. She's an admin for Bill's Mafia Babes, and if you don't know who Bill's Mafia Babes is, you, you live under a rock, right? So they're, they're a great organization. It started with Kristen Kimmick. Um, you might know her from the AFC Championship game. Uh, I believe she kind of went viral for spreading the ashes of her like father i believe in in arrowhead stadium during the afc championship game which you know very heartwarming and you know i felt for her but anyways i i believe the way that organization started is she kind of was belittled by some other bills fan on social media platforms and didn't really give her thought Uh, like give her ideas and opinions a lot of thought and i'm it just kind of behooved her to start bill's mafia babes where she would include a bunch of women uh, who had similar interest of the buffalo bills and it just blew up like significantly so where are they now they have over twelve thousand um people in bill's mafia babes they raise money for bills non related uh or I'm sorry, bills related non profits, pardon me, such as, you know, Kids Escape Drugs by Jordan Poyer. They also do group work with twenty six shirts and resurgence brewing company, such as the Big Berry Bean that drop just dropped. So, you know, you can find that at a local Wegmans near you, which which is great. I'm very, very excited to try that out. I was in Buffalo the other day and I couldn't find it, so I was a little bummed out, but um, in any event, you got to check out Bill's Mafia Babes. It, they're doing great, great things over there and noble work. So, huge stuff. 
Yeah, I'm really excited to be able to talk to Angelina today and just kind of get from her perspective what the growth has been like and all the things that they're getting into over there at Bill's Mafia Babe. Bill's Mafia Babes, I'm sorry. And, you know, I've, I've been a fan for about as long as I've been on Twitter, which has been, you know, kind of at the inception of this podcast. So I'm I'm late to the game. So I'm really excited to, you know, learn a little bit more about, about their group and, and what they got going on right now. Yeah. And furthermore, she also does a show uh, called The Chop Up with Jay Spence the King. You can always find him on the Buffalo Rumbling Networks. You, if you know us, you definitely know him. He's uh, She also does it with uh, Sterling Shepard. No, I'm sorry, Sterling Furrow. Sterling Shepard is the wide receiver. But hey, it wouldn't surprise me if she knew him either. But Sterling Shepard, or Farrell, of the Cover One Network as well. So I love that show. Definitely check that one out. Always on YouTube and on most podcasting platforms. Uh, and again, we're going to recap tonight's episode, or we're going to recap the big win that the Bills had over the Kansas City Chiefs. And right off the bat we had a we put out a poll about how we felt about this team in overall grade a b c d justin where do you where do you think most voters put their vote uh i'd say probably riding in the a category absolutely yeah a lot of people joined with uh who voted 77 percent, and no surprise there especially after a big win against the Chiefs and it's just it's just awesome like you know you you got that monkey off your back and i i, I don't i'm at a loss for words right it almost feels i'd imagine this is what it felt like for the cardinals when they got the hell murray play but that that that's just the best way i could describe it i'm just happy just plain out happy and joining our show now is angelina Angelina, I kind of gave you a uh, intro, or at least the best that I could do. So I explained them. <laughs> you know, you're the admin, an admin for Bills Mafia, babe. I plugged in the chop up that you do with Jay Spence and Sterling Furrow and uh, the founder Kimmy, um, or I'm sorry, Kristen, and uh, just explained how you do a lot of nonprofit fundraising work for Bills non uh, nonprofit groups. So I really, really impressive work. And I just got to say, I haven't seen you face to face in over 10 years. Way <laughs> Quite... too long. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And I, I didn't tell Justin and uh, Jake here, who's our executive producer, how we know each other. I just kept it as a mystery. But we went to high school with each other. But uh, you were a grade above me yeah. and went with, Chris, with my brother, Chris. So I, I'm very fortunate to have this connection with you. And I so stoked about what you got going on in your life and you're doing you're doing big big things with bill's mafia babes and i i'm a little bummed out because i couldn't i was in buffalo yesterday and i couldn't find the the big berry bean at i was i was a little depressed yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be coming out soon so it's definitely on tap at resurgence and thank you by the way i'm so excited to be on here i know i haven't seen you in so long but i'm super excited to be here um to be chatting with you guys. But yeah, like you said, um, Big Berry Bean just came out on Sunday. We had a release party during the Chiefs game. So that was like the best way to enjoy it was a Bills win, obviously. But um, yeah, so it's gonna be coming out, I think later this week, it should be in Wegmans. And I think also Consumers is where it's gonna be sold. So gonna find out um, the exact time it's gonna be in stores, but definitely people really enjoyed it. And the best thing about it is that a dollar from, if you have it on tap or if you buy a four pack, a dollar from each sale is gonna go right towards uh, Brandon Bean and Haley Bean's Bill's Mupfia charity. So that's gonna fund a lot of adoptions. So a lot of dogs and cats and all kinds of animals are going to have homes all paid for um, thanks to Bill's Mafia. So, Wow. Just, yeah. again, fantastic work with whatever with everything that you guys are doing. And I'm excited. And I can only imagine that keg got kicked by the end of that night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. People were going, like, flying through it. I'm like, oh, my goodness. And it, was, it went so down so smooth. It was really good. And it was fun to make it, too. Like, this was the first time I really – Actually, second time I got to be part of like a brewing process. So does this see from where it came from beginning to end and then to enjoy it with your friends? And again, the Bills beating the Chiefs, it was just like icing on top. It was really great. 
Right, right. So you came at the perfect time because we're going to start going into this Bills uh, big win against the Kansas City Chiefs. So what we're going to do was we're going to go by position group and just kind of talk about our, you know, best favorite or favorite plays, least favorite plays, and just kind of talk about it. Not Nothing really structured here, but uh, I have a feeling it will be a, a great conversation nonetheless. Definitely. So... You know we got to start with Josh Allen. He had a 57.7 completion percentage, 315 yards, a QBR of 139, four total touchdowns, zero interceptions. And I got to ask both of you and the listeners out there, are you still worried about Josh Allen? <laughs> I'm not. I'm definitely not. I Justin. I had I had that week in there where I had I had a a small amount of concern, but. Yeah, over the last couple of weeks, he's really eradicated that from me. For sure. And I loved the naysayers out there who said he couldn't play in front of crowds, and he just played in front of the loudest stadium in all of the NFL. Quite literally, a, you know, people were like, oh, he can't play in front of fans. And for all the naysayers out there, I want to thank you. Keep doing what you do because it just clearly just – fuels Josh Allen to improve on those imperfections that you like to point out and just makes him become a better player. So thank you. Thank you so much. Keep it up. (laughs) So I guess uh, I'll I'll give you my favorite play with Josh Allen, and I'm not going to take the obvious one here, the low-hanging fruit. I'm sure one of you will do it. (laughs) But I got to go with that touchdown pass to Emmanuel Sanders. He climbs the pocket throws the perfect throw. Emmanuel Sanders didn't have to do anything except for keep running and it quite literally just stuck to his hands. It 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 was beautiful that to say the like just to say the least. So I, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but that was my personal favorite. Yeah that one was actually my favorite too. I, I know where I know you're trying to lead me with the low hanging fruit. Um but I'll pivot then um, really any of the strikes to Dawson Knox I just really love seeing the chemistry that they're building mm-hmm. and there there was so much conversation in the offseason about like you know is Dawson Knox going to break out is, is he that guy should we be looking for his replacement and and just the way they're flourishing together I, I got to give some respect there I'll go the Dawson Knox touchdown just he's keeping it rolling another game yeah, I've been super impressed with Dawson Knox. I keep seeing, you know, people put out, you know, the Dawson Knox t- apology for him because everyone wanted, you know, Zach Ertz instead of him. And I think he's been so incredible and so consistent the last five weeks. So I'm really excited for him and what's to come for the rest of the season. But um, I was actually obviously the low hanging through. Um, that hurdle was amazing. I mean, Air Allen strikes again. That was amazing to watch but um I was also mm-hmm. really impressed with the Emmanuel Sanders throw and just watching him you know post game in the interview he was saying he's like I almost didn't know what to do that I caught it because he just like wasn't expecting him to throw it on like such a rope to him so just to hear mm-hmm. him say that and just for him you know to praise Josh Allen and just to say you know this kid's special you know I played for with some really great quarterbacks but this guy's really special so I thought that was really cool and just you know kind of you know, emphasizes just how great Josh has really been. Yeah, I I agree with you. And to talk a little bit about Dawson Knox, I'm pretty sure he only needs to have three more touchdowns this year, and that would break an NFL record. Or I'm sorry, a franchise record for the most touchdowns a Buffalo Bills tight end had in an, in a regular season, which is crazy because that just shows how starved this organization was for um a tight end the the only relevant one that i can think about is scott chandler and his shovel touchdown in detroit when we had to play the jets i thought that was pretty cool um but clearly that didn't pan out well and yeah just to have a guy a veteran guy who's been around the league seen it all like emmanuel sanders to talk glowingly about our young superstar quarterback I I am a okay with that. Absolutely. <laughs> right. So let's talk about this offensive line, and it, it's kind of hard to point out uh, offensive like highlight or offensive line highlights or lowlights. 
uh, at least for me, because on this podcast, we're we're not professionals and we don't claim to be professionals. We're, we're just kind of like, you know, we're just hanging out and just talking bills. So for me, I think, I think my personal favorite offensive highlight that I saw was I, I remember Zach Moss got hit initially four yards into his run. And I see Spencer Brown get off his tackle who he laid out on the floor and just run into this man and bulldozed him forward for an extra four yards and it was really impressive to see the contribution from uh, the young rookie because I, I I just didn't think he was gonna be this good this quick so very excited to see see that yeah, I think Spencer's been really fun to watch, uh, especially last week, you know, him, you know, escorting, you know, people to the sideline and everything like that. But mm-hmm. I think he's just been so explosive and so impactful so quick that it's just been, you know, he's immediately, you know, having a really big part of this game. So I think I'm really excited for him and to see, you know, how he's going to progress throughout the season. Right. Yeah, it, it's hard for me not to say Spencer Brown here. It, he just – towers over everybody on the field and even when I'm not trying to watch him I find my eyes going to him mm-hmm. and and as you said you know when he kind of pushed the pile uh, it was this week and last week's game where there's just so many so many run plays that are look like they're dead at about four yards and Spencer Brown just comes bulldozing and then pushes mm-hmm. the pile another four or five yards um, and that that's something that I I just love seeing a guy that that's he's never giving up on the play and and he looks really good for where I thought he would be at this point in the season. Yeah, you know we got to come up with a nickname for Spencer Brown and I have one in my head and I don't know why I, I'm thinking about that viral video that he had um, against I forgot who was on the Titans but he was saying you know you're short. You're short. Yeah. <laughs> Get off my face. And how you said how he escorts players to the sideline. I think in how he bounces people for it, I, I think he's a bouncer. You know, he's a bouncer on the field, but like a really, really good one. I, I that I'm gonna call him the bouncer. Spencer Brown the bouncer. <laughs> I like it. He seems to yeah, have a big okay. following. Like I remember on Twitter there was like a whole fan club. I don't know. I think it yeah. might have been like his hometown. So to see him have like that much support and they really like love and love supporting him, I think that's really cool. Yeah, that was easily over 50 people and they had a banner saying spencer brown fan club right? yeah is that, is that the photo? yep that's exactly yeah. what it was yeah and what they they were at the game right i don't know if they were at the game or if they were watching at home but like they were For like we are spencer brown's out. fan club like we're here yeah yeah and i remember a lot of people i mean w- during the time of the draft when it happened a lot of people were like why did we pick this guy you know they wanted a more like i i guess impact right now player and i would argue that it was an impact now player in hindsight so very excited for him as soon as i saw him jump through a table like when he found out he got drafted i'm like he's definitely here to stay he's in the right place yep sign me up yeah sign me up that's my guy right there (laughs) (laughs) all right let's talk about the tight end here and Knox, Knox, man, he he went in and uh, the high. There's he had three catches and all of them are highlights. So, and I, I'll let someone else go first here because I feel like I'm just manhandling manhandling it. So, Justin, do you want to take lead on this I, I, on your favorite I play? I don't even have a particular favorite play from him. It's just kind of the overall essence that is Dawson Knox right now he looks like he's playing with confidence um even even uh the one the one pass was like well behind him and he had to turn and get it and that's something that I feel like may have been a drop last year and he just really looks like he's putting it all together for me and granted he only had three catches but he went over 100 yards and it's really hard for me to like pick one of them and say which one is my favorite because that all three of them were such great plays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I've just been really impressed with, like, his body awareness and how much it's improved. And like you said, you know, mm-hmm. there's things last year that, like, ap- like the catches he's making now, like, he would have dropped last year. So to see him just make that jump in his improvement and, you know, 
we've known him to be, you know, really great at blocking and, you know, being a really hard runner. So to see him like continue to do those things, but also just be someone who's a dependable target, I think makes him, you know, that much more of an asset. So I've liked what I've seen from him. Yeah. And if I had to pick one play that I thought was really impressive, and again, all of them were very impressive by him, it it had to be that pass where Allen threw it up and it was it felt like a true 50-50 ball and Knox just took it away from the guy or maybe he didn't but it, it to me in real time I was like he just mossed this dude he was behind the the cornerback was in front of him and he just went up top and was like yank that's mine yep. <laughs> all that to say I gotta ask you guys do you think the Bills finally have an elite tight end we put a poll out on twitter so i'm curious on where you think the the voting lies i'm a yes i think he's definitely trending that way yeah yeah and i would i would say if you don't agree with me show me some evidence of this season thus far that points to the contrary he's definitely showing out and 83 percent of the voters would agree with us 17% 17% say no, and hey, if you if that's what you believe in, I, I I hope Knox can just keep proving you wrong, and that's that's perfectly fine by me. <laughs> so let's move on to these receivers. Angelina, why, why don't you pick your favorite play out of all the wide receivers? Oh, man. I'm going to keep going back to Emmanuel Sanders. I don't know why, but, like, I remember mm-hmm. just, like, literally – like I like I said, I released party just like jumping and body slamming and like high fiving so many people just from that because I just like saw it and I'm like, is he actually going to catch that and to see him like actually do it mm-hmm. and to make it and that was like incredible to me. So I was really impressed with him. And then just overall this year, I think he's been such an asset in the locker room. You know, just from a leadership mm-hmm. perspective, but also just to have someone who you know who's been to the Super Bowl. You know, who knows what's expected. You know who's been in those shoes before I think that's really you know beneficial to Josh and the offense to have someone like that there so I'm really happy with how he's done this season um he's killing it out there yeah I'd agree the loss of John Brown when it first came when the news broke through I was I was, I was pretty bummed. upset I was sad yeah I love smoke. I, was I, love so smoke. Sad. I think he yeah. um is signing with the uh the Broncos to their practice squad so oh really back in the NFL well, yeah. yep Hey, good for him. I I was pretty taken back, and I guess it just showed Brandon Bean made the right move at the right time because he signed with Oakland in the off season, and then he couldn't make that team, and Zay Jones made that team. So, no no shade towards Zay Jones, but I think John Brown. If you if you couldn't beat out Zay Jones, then that that's just saying something. Um, you might have lost a step. But yeah, my, there's there are a lot of plays that are really good from the wide receivers, and for me, this might sound weird, but it's got to be that Stefan Diggs deep deep pass where he didn't score a touchdown, and he the reason why I picked that play is because I'm pretty sure they put out their old the you know the five wide receiver set that they were famous for last season uh, during that play and you know it didn't really work in last year's AFC championship game or you know the regular season game and then you saw it work this play which was which gave me you know it made me feel good and you could tell that when Stefan Diggs caught it he was he you know he looked around and you know he he was like oh I'm open, I'm open, I'm open. And he was trying to get into the end zone, but unfortunately, uh, I think he was trying to turn his body and he had to like, you saw like his body jerk a little bit, which ultimately slowed him down and Sorensen was able to tackle him. So I I take a lot of upside out of that play, even though it didn't give us points at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are my first two picks. And it's really hard for me to go away from the Emmanuel Sanders one, just it was like the the ball came shooting out of the pocket so fast, like the cameras were having a hard time keeping up with it, and it's just on Sanders. Um, but my pick was that Stefan Diggs one, and that one, for me, it was kind of seeing 
you know, with all the pieces that we're integrating into the offense and getting the run game going and getting the tight ends going, Stefan Diggs has had good games, but they haven't been like super bananas games. And it, it was really fun for me um, just to see him coming free down the middle of the field and just thinking forward of like what that could mean to our offense if you really have to respect Knox and you really have to respect Sanders like the down the line what that can mean for what Diggs is able to do against teams so that one, that one was my pick for that reason mm-hmm. right and it feels like people are they want more from Diggs and I understand he set the bar really really high last year prolific style player for in quite literally historic style player for the Bills at wide receiver which they've never had before and that all that to say you know he's doing his job and although the numbers aren't there right now he's still projected to be over a thousand yards this season which is really really good before then I think the last thousand yard receiver we had was John Brown when he first came and then you saw John Brown's production just kind of fall off a cliff so I think Stefan Diggs has proven that he's a consistent weapon in this offense. And if he's not getting the ball, he's opening up uh, other avenues for the other weapons in this offense. So mm-hmm. really good player, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the running backs. And yeah, there there are some good plays out of out of the running game. And there was a clear emphasis. It was definitely a more balanced attack against the Chiefs. But I will say the first two drops that the that Moss and Singletary had early in the game kind of gave me some PTSD of the AFC Championship game. You remember, you know what I'm talking about, where he dumps it to Singletary and he just drops it right in front of him, and he just looks up and he's like, "My bad." Yeah. <laughs> oh, so rough. Um, I'll I'll let you kick this one off. What was your favorite running rushing uh, play? Oh man. I don't even I don't even think I have one honestly. I think I've just been really in general just like how Zach Moss has been running. Mm-hmm. I think he's been like improving like ever since the Dolphins game. I feel like that was like the game that like things like really clicked from him. You know, you kind of saw yeah. him, you know, have some mistakes and then you know coach McDermott kind of gave him the chance to like redeem himself and I feel like from that moment yes. on he has just been like powering through people and I think he's been, you know, doing a great job out there. So I would say he's probably my favorite running back right now. You know, obviously I love Singletary mm-hmm. and, you know, he's really shifty and, you know, can dance and move through. But I think Moss is just, you know, he's been really the power runner that we've been needing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, great, great point that, uh, out there in terms of the Miami game, because we saw last year when he fumbled on the one yard line again, on Monday Night Football against the 49ers, you didn't see Moss again. Right. But this year, In that Miami game, he fumbled, and McDermott was like, hey, go back out there, prove yourself. And we know he was playing with a heavy heart with the passing of his aunt Mm -hmm. and really touching stuff, and you didn't find out about that until after the game, which at the end of the day, these these players are human. Mm -hmm. So for him to go out there with playing with that type of emotion and messing up in a game and able to bounce back from that, and only build upon that performance really really impressive and speaks a lot about who he is as a person and it i'm just really impressed with him Mm -hmm. so all that to say i thought all the running back plays um were really equal they consistently were getting at least four or five six yards something like that and it kept patrick mahomes on the sideline and kept the clock running and i'm all for it yeah, I'd have to say my my favorite running play is actually one that never existed because it got called back on. Uh, I think it was a Dawkins hold. The third and one. Yeah. I, oh, it was, I know what you're talking about. Moss just kind of he made somebody miss like in the backfield and kicked it outside, and it went yeah. for something like fifteen twenty yards. And I have to give this one to Moss because we saw it like in the preseason. And in the preseason in particular, but also early in the season, that he's had some of these, you know, highlight type runs that get called back on holding. And then all of a sudden they don't show up on the stat sheet. So it's like, I think he ended the day with something like 
40 yards and like a 3.4 average but like he still put in that work and and pretty much had the same numbers as Singletary on less carries but another one of those little holding calls that that erases his play so I got to give Moss some love there absolutely and I know exactly what you're talking about because I thought that was a weak call and we'll get to commentating and you know refereeing real soon don't don't worry <laughs> We're, we'll get to that um but yeah Moss definitely I think performed very well this game and you know Singletary also did his job too and but I think Moss was definitely the marquee back that he looked like we were getting out of the third round in the draft moving on we're going to talk about the special teams your favorite play your least favorite play uh Justin why don't you kick this one off uh so my favorite play is just a general Isaiah McKenzie continued to give the ball back to Josh Allen um, I, I wanted to touch more on my least favorite play here. Uh, I kind of, uh, I'll only do one of them, but I had two, two gripes. Um, but I'll go with Tyler Bass, um, kicking, putting a kickoff out of bounds, oh, um, yeah, for the second that. week in a row. Um, not something that ended up really obviously hurting us in either game. Um, but it, it's just one of those little things that, you know, they get the ball at the 40 yard line They they got. 20 30 yards till they're in field goal range Mm -hmm. um so that that's something that you know while it seems small in the details it's something that i would really like to see go away yeah uh you know my favorite play is when it it was a punt and saran neal was a gunner on it and you saw three chiefs players just on him and he tweeted out later he's like tell me somebody got that snapshot on him it, the the chiefs were just like all right just stop saran <laughs> like don't let him don't let him get down the pipeline and eventually that came back but to a holding call or something like that um but it was a it was a play that didn't exist but i just thought it it spoke to the type of player that he was my least favorite play which is also the funniest play to me is when we're about to get a kickoff and you know you see Isaiah mckenzie dry off his hands with a towel and then throw it aside he's like i'm gonna catch this football I'm going to catch this football. And he looked so confident. And then he bobbled it and muffed it, picked it up off the ground and got minimal yardage from it. But I just thought that was so funny. Um, and it was, it's completely understandable. It quite literally was a monsoon. We had an hour and a half intermission. intermission so it, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say for mine um, was just our awareness. So they, uh, the Chiefs tried to do kind of like this, like onside kick and like, we read it right away. Oh yeah. And we were just able to be like, no, no, no. Like we saw that coming. Like, you're not going to get very far with that. So I would say, you know, our awareness, cause sometimes I did question that, you know, in the first few weeks, you know, either, you know, Isaiah McKenzie kind of bubbling things or people just not really being aware of like what's going on. So I think to me that like made me feel a little bit better that like, okay, you guys are paying attention. Like you're making sure Mm -hmm. that, you know, it could have been a lot worse, obviously, especially a team like the Chiefs. Like, they're going to capitalize. You know, if we're out of position and we're not ready, like, they're going to capitalize it just the same way we would do it. So I thought that mm-hmm. was, you know, something that made me feel a little bit better about special teams. Yeah, definitely a heads-up play because the Chiefs were trying to squeak in a, like a little maybe field goal right before the end of the half, and the Bills were all over it. Great great point because I, as soon as I saw, you know, you, you know, after – you think you're going to get the ball back. You kick your feet up and you just kind of, you know, take a sip of your drink. And I remember I took a sip of mine. I saw the kick and I was like, <laughs> like I was like, no, <laughs> like, no, <laughs> you, you think it's going to be easy and simple like that, but it's not sometimes, but great heads up play by the special teams. <laughs> um, so that's going to wrap it up for the offensive highlights and lowlights of uh, the beat down on the chiefs. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to wrap up this episode by talking about the defense, and I'm just going to give you some general stats here. 69 tackles, 50 solo tackles, 2 sacks, 3 tackles for loss, 8 QB hits, 4 pass breakups, and 20 points allowed. And I have that bolded because you held the Chiefs to 20 points. Really, really remarkable stuff, and you made them kick field goals. 
and you stopped him on fourth down. So uh, we're, we're just going to continue the theme here um, by talking about this defensive line. And Angelina, I'll let you start off by telling us your favorite play by them and I guess your least favorite if you have one. Yeah, I was going to say my favorite play by far was uh, Greg Rousseau when he had that tip and ultimate yes. interception. I'm like, I was so excited for him, you know, the beginning of this year, you know, I knew he was going to, you know, pressure a lot of QBs and we really, you know, didn't blitz or anything crazy like that because we just knew not mm-hmm. to. But I think just his an awareness and just how long his arms are. I've actually seen him in person and uh, he is a large man. So to just, you know, see his size be utilized and for him to just, you know, pick up on those, you know, mistakes from Mahomes and ultimately get a turnover out of it, I think was really mm-hmm. great. And I think just in general, the defense did a really good job getting turnovers. I kind of said in the chop up on Saturday that I think that was going to be the biggest thing for our defense, you know, because looking mm-hmm. back to week one when we lost against Pittsburgh and, you know, they're kind of trying to talk to them, you know, hey, like, when you were struggling, like what was going on out there? And I want to say it was Jordan Poyer was just like, our, just the inability to make turnovers. Like we just mm-hmm. almost like didn't know what to do and we were getting really stumped. So I thought, you know, that was going to be huge going into, you know, this week with the Chiefs is like, that's going to be huge is to just get those turnovers, make sure we get the ball back to Josh and ultimately just have possession of the ball, you know, more than they do. So I thought they did a really great job with that. And like I said, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just so impressed with them. Yeah. Justin? Well, I I think that's the very the very obvious one definitely would be my pick and I don't wanna keep piggybacking off of other picks. So I had um it was a play where Patrick Mahomes actually broke the pocket and ran for a first down. Um so it's kind of a weird favorite play. Um but I remember this play, Justin Zimmer was chasing yes. him in the pocket and you know, we saw times in the game where we had like Jordan Poyer in a foot race with with Patrick Mahomes and losing the foot race. And I just remember this play and Zimmer's all the way from the backfield just haul ass and after Mahomes mm-hmm. and it, he gets there like right as the play is ending anyways. But I I think Justin Zimmer's kind of gets lost in the mix with all these talented young players that we have. Th- that dude just he's so fast and he goes out there and every single play that he's on the field, he's just going 100 miles an hour. And yeah, I got to give that man some credit. Definitely. Mm-hmm. I, I guess for me, and I would say Boogie Basham, you know, he was a healthy scratch all throughout this year, except for last week and this week, but he makes the most of his opportunities out on the field. He, he's got a motor that keeps going, and I'm pretty sure he got a sack during this game, if I'm not mistaken, or uh, played a factor into one. And I just think that if we can get this return on investment on Boogie right now, and if it can grow into something bigger, we we might be talking about the biggest steal of the draft. So... I'm really happy with what I saw with Boogie and how he doesn't give up on a play no matter what. And I don't really have a least favorite play, and it kind of almost feels nitpicky if we pick one, right? So after such a dominant win. So we might not say anything for least favorite plays, but hey, we're just telling you how how we feel. And I I don't really have anything to point to where I'm like, hey, you guys guys didn't do a good job here because overall, great team win. Mm-hmm. let's move to linebackers and i swore matt milano was going to play in this game I'm because so sad he didn't i know and because they were you know mcdermott said yeah he's going to be out in practice today on on friday and you know you see him on they featured a photo of him on their social media account where he's boarding the plane and you're like i'm i'm ready i'm ready for milano to come out here but it's aj klein who actually takes takes the starting job and I don't have any least favorite plays out of linebackers. And my favorite play by linebackers is every A.J. Klein tackle. And I I say that because I was very worried about him playing this game, but he did perfectly fine. And he did exactly what the Bills asked him to, and he contributed to a Bills win. I think that's a good point. And just like 
I think the depth in general is just like, it makes, it's so reassuring, right? It's just like, you know, if somebody can't go the next man up, even if it's a rookie, like there's no drop, like they're right there, like giving 110%. And I think for them to just like step up to that level and just like blend right in with the vets, I think that's huge. So I was really impressed with them. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to do a little cheating route here. I think, I think Klein and Edmonds both played very solid games. Um, but nothing really like popping out at me. So I went Andre Smith here um, on that heads up play yes. on the, the fumble on the kick return. Um, okay. Just kind of showing the way that the, the other players can contribute in other ways. And just because he's not, you know, a three down starter as a linebacker, you know, somebody's got to get out there and make a heads up play like that. And Saran Neal made a great play there, and Andre Smith cleaned it up for him. Yeah, and uh, you kind of stole my favorite cornerback play, which is where we're going next, and which would have been the Saranil forced fumble. And I think after that, yeah, well, you know it is, but I'm going to try picking something different. But I think after that play, you know, the the Chiefs were like, okay, Saranil's a problem. That's especially in the punt game. Put three people on him. (laughs) So it's clear that he's a contributor on all phases of special team uh, teams. And he was out there one, like one V one with Travis Kelsey, the best tight end in the NFL. And he did very good in my opinion. You know, he, I mean, yeah, he drew a couple flags, but surround Neil's not a featured chess piece on this defense, but the bills were like, Hey, go out and get him," And he got him. So I'm ready for him to get him again. (laughs) But I, I guess my favorite cornerback play is any cornerback that was leveraging with the high safety against Tyreek Hill because they re- the Bills' defense did such a good job containing Tyreek Hill's speed and bottling him up. And overall, solid work by the cornerback rooms. I have no no gripe. Yeah, I was going to say one. Oh, go ahead. No, you can go first. Yeah, I was going to say one play, you know, obviously contain Tyreek Hill, but also being able um, to contain um, Travis Kelsey, too, because I feel like he's always, like, our kryptonite. I'm like, if we can't stop these two, like, we have a problem. But I feel like this week they did a a really good job. But there was one play where um, Mahomes was throwing it and Trey White um, was covering Kelsey, and he ultimately – ended up like ragdoll throwing him yeah. to the sideline and everyone else even like Ed Oliver was storming up like everyone was like going crazy directions you know like taking away these lanes and just like put so much pressure and I was just like wow that is probably one of the most explosive you know plays I've seen of just like everyone being really mm-hmm. powerful and really impactful but yeah that was definitely one of my favorite plays by Trey White that he just literally threw him I was like yes Travis Kelsey's a big man like for him to just like throw him like it was nothing i was like holy crap i know exactly what you're talking about because it wasn't a f- if you weren't paying attention to it specifically you wouldn't have seen it happen and the play was completely away from him but you know Trey white to like let him know like we're here mm-hmm. we at you yeah like, <laughs> you, you, we, i we saw how you guys played us in the championship game getting all handsy and stuff we, we're about to get handsy too so we're going to beat you at your own game. Definitely. Really appreciate that. Uh, Justin, what, what was your favorite cornerback play? Um, so for mine, it wasn't – I don't remember the exact context of it. It was it was like a second and eight, third and eight, some, something like that. It was fairly early in the game, and it was Trey White coming underneath, and, and it was a drag route underneath, and he stayed right with the receiver. I believe that one was Pringle. Mm-hmm. I, Pringle or Robinson, either way, one of those dudes with with just dumb, fast speed and hung with him for the whole route and was able to get in there and break up break up the pass. And it wasn't so much the play for me as kind of the tone setting of, you know, we're not going to go out there and just get torched in the track meet today. We're, we're going to hang with any of these receivers. Mm-hmm. And I think there was a lot of scheming that went into keeping them in good positions, but the guys had to go out there and make the plays, and, and they looked good doing that. So I have right. no real gripes with the secondary myself. All right, Angelina, you know what we're doing here, and I'm going to let you take off with the safeties. Favorite play? It's got to be Micah Hyde. That yes. interception, the cameraman in the background was, like, equally as yes. hyped. I'm like, that is, like, 
I don't know, hanging in the Albright Knox or something because that was like one of my favorite plays the whole game. Yeah, I didn't even see the cameraman until I saw it on social media that you shared it. You're the one who found it, I'm pretty sure. And I was like, I was like, oh my God, it was so electric. And he, he got the unbiased cameraman yeah. in, in it. So <laughs> I, I was really impressed. And, you know, um, Claire, the voice of the podcast, was sleeping. And all she heard was, heard with me because this was late in the evening after the weather July. But I was like, yes, yes. And she was like, what's going on? Like, woke her up out of dead asleep. <laughs> Uh, it was she worth it, she was happy for me though. Yeah. yeah. All right. And uh I think that does it up for the defense. So the only thing we really got to talk about here is refereeing and commentating. And you know, it I'll I'll just put it like this. The Bills were able to beat the Chiefs by playing them straight up by beating them at their own game and why they, you know, neutralized the Bills' offense last year. They kind of took that, you know, recipe and used it against the Chiefs. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Again, I'm not an expert, but it seemed that way to me. And I felt like officiating, as well as commentating, were really kind of pulling for the Chiefs for a little bit. And, you know, we got some calls our way too. But one play that kind of blows my mind in term out of the two is how when Ed Oliver fell on Patrick Mahomes like legs they were like oh that's rough in the past you can't do that but then you see Frank Clark pile drive Josh Allen into the ground put all of his weight on him and if you don't want to call that pass interference like all right fine I don't agree with you but then another Chiefs lineman falls on Allen's legs, quite literally how Ed Oliver fell on Mahomes' legs. So uh, I didn't agree how bias and just unprofessional, honestly, how Chris Collinsworth was and Al Michaels were. It, it's just because I have I usually think that those guys are pretty good, but it, tonight it just did not feel that way. I, I don't know how you guys feel. Yeah, I, I feel like the I feel like the officiating was it was just a crew that wants to throw the flags on everything, which if that's how you're gonna officiate the game, fine. But I just don't feel like it was the same on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. I feel like Russo had like three, four would be sacks, and I'm just like from my vantage point just watching him have his um his blocker having two handfuls of jersey and he's trying to go left and he's trying to go right and he's just stuck to him um so for me if you're gonna call a game that way it's got to be consistent both ways and i just i just didn't feel like it was and yeah as far as collinsworth goes i i feel like he went in there as a chiefs fan and when (laughs) when they weren't winning he didn't really know that he could call an unbiased game i guess i don't know he he really seemed like he was pulling for the chiefs and thought that it was going to happen the whole time so i don't know what what was going on there i usually i usually pretty much like him but i don't know it was weird yeah yeah i would say refereeing wise just like the inconsistencies were really really frustrating overall um Mm -hmm. you know especially in things like with the ed oliver call you know there's just certain times and it's like I've watched it you know kind of like slower and then watched it you know at you know real time and I'm just like it's so hard and even being like a rugby player like when you're running that fast it is extremely hard to just like stop on a dime and like stop like you know stop your momentum to like you know not do that and it's just like they have to I think the refs need to think about intent too like he wasn't like oh I'm gonna go you know drive down on my own like he like he's like I'm sorry I'm here like I'm falling like so I think like you know the ref should know things like that, and they need to, you know, I think take that more into consideration. Um, but as far as Collinsworth, I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> like, we get yeah. you love Patrick on, Mahomes. Man. We get you love the Chiefs. But it's just like, at the end of the day, like, you're a professional. You should be prepared for both teams, not just, you know, loving yeah. on one side. So I think that kind of, you know, and I know we're not the only ones that have had that opinion. That It's like, you know, pretty widespread. That it's just like, hey, man, like, 
you need to be better prepared for, you know, games like this. Like, even if you didn't think that, you know, Buffalo was going to come out on top, like, you should still be just as prepared as you were for the Chiefs. Yeah. And um, I I guess that leaves the spotlight player of the game. So, for me, it's got to be Knox. He's just ascending. He's doing great. I, I that's it. That's, I I don't have much else to say. He, we've already talked about how well, him earlier in this episode. He's he's doing fantastic. So it's Knox for me, but I'm it's take, a close second for Hyde. I'm taking Russo this week. Uh, just everybody's saying you know he's a project player. Maybe you'll see returns in two three years. And I started buying into that. And he had a great game. And it doesn't all show up on the stat sheet, but. Five games into his NFL career, he's got an interception as a defensive end. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Josh Allen. I think he had a lot of pressure on him this week. You know, can he play in a big marquee game? Can he beat Patrick Mahomes and, you know, the Chiefs? So I think this was a huge game for him. I think it was a statement game for him. You know, people kind of argue that, but I absolutely think it was a statement game um, for Josh and the Bills. So I think he did great, you know, showed off his athleticism. Um, I'm just really proud of him and how he's progressed as a quarterback. Yeah, all great choices and a lot of tough choices because uh, the team just did well, and that's a great problem to have. Anyways, before we wrap up this episode, i got to ask you guys, what's your peanut butter to jelly ratio? I'm, I eat a peanut butter and jelly every single day, and I thought that was weird how the broadcasting was like, all right, well, we don't got much to talk about. How about your peanut butter jelly ratio? <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding. We don't have to get into that. But uh, the clear answer is, you know, 60-40 peanut butter to jelly, in my opinion. Anyways, that's going to wrap. I'm a solid 50-50. Yeah. Solid 50 Yeah. Oh, solid 50-50. All right. All right. Justin, go ahead. Chime in. 70-30. Give me all the extra peanut butter I want. All day long. Love it. Well, hey, to each his own, and I'm, I'm cool with it. All right. Anyways, that's going to wrap up tonight's episode. Angelina, thank you so much for joining our show. It's been far too long and ah, such a such a great experience with you being on the show. And you're doing great work over at Bill's Mafia, babes, and great community work as well. And I, I'm just happy for you and what, with everything that you're doing. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I got to be here. I had a blast with you guys tonight. So I love what you guys are doing, and thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Anyways, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and review our podcast, as well as other amazing shows that you can find on Built in Buffalo Network. We're always looking for great guests on our show, such as Angelina herself. So if you're interested, feel free to reach out to us on our social media platforms by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. Justin, Angelina, where can the people find you? I'm always at AJ, at jgads22. Angelina, tell the people where they can find you. Yeah, so I'm on Twitter at billsbabe716. That's where I am on Twitter. And you can always find me by searching 2 Changs. That's going to do it for tonight's episode. Take care, everyone. Enjoy this Bills dub. Let's get after the Titans. Go Bills. Go Bills. Bills.